Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This video is the last episode of this EFA series. We are going to perform analysis to examine the validity and reliability of the instrument in this video. And lastly, we are going to interpret and report the results based on a checklist. Validity refers to how accurately an instrument measures what it is intended to measure. If an instrument shows high validity, which means that the concepts studied are accurately represented by the items of the instrument. In this video, we are focusing on discriminant validity, which is the extent to which the factors are distinct and uncorrelated. A good instrument should display good discriminant validity, where the factor is able to account for more variance in the observed variables rather than other constructs within the conceptual framework. Two strategies can be used to assess discriminant validity. The first method is to examine your pattern matrix or rotated component matrix. There should be a minimal cross loadings, meaning that an item desirably load on a single factor instead of loading on several factors at the same time. The alternative is to check the factor correlation matrix. The correlations between the factors should be less than 0.7. This is the factor correlation matrix. If you see that the correlation among the factors are high, then you'll be facing multi-collinearity issue. To avoid this, you might want to remove the problematic items or improve the wording of certain items to prevent confusions. How to obtain this factor correlation matrix? This is one of the output when oblique rotation is selected. It is generated automatically when you are using Promax or direct oblique rotation. Let's look at the SPSS example. We will go to analyze dimension reduction and select factor. Just like the procedures showed in the previous video, we select all the items and put it into the column, then go to descriptives. Select the information we need, click continue, extraction method, script plot, and choose the number of factors to be extracted. Then decide your rotation method. So we are going to use Promax in this uh, demonstration, uh, which is the oblique rotation. Click continue. And here, click OK. Then we will go to the output. You can see that factor correlation matrix is here. As you can see from the results, there are no correlation which is above the value of 0.7. That means we are safe. Discriminant validity is achieved and no multicollinearity issue is present. But if you are using orthogonal rotation, uh, we will try to run the analysis again. But this time we will choose another rotation method. We will go for Verimax and click continue. So if you are using orthogonal rotation, you wouldn't see a factor correlation matrix here. Instead of it, you will see factor transformation matrix. This is because when you are using orthogonal rotation, you are assuming that there is no correlation between the factors. So factor correlation matrix is not produced. The last analysis part for EFA will be testing the reliability of the instrument. Reliability refers to the extent to which scores on an instrument are free from measurement errors. There are three aspects of reliability, namely internal consistency, stability, and equivalence. This video will focus on internal consistency, which is frequently represented by Cronbach's alpha coefficient. A minimum value of 0.7 for Cronbach's alpha is considered acceptable for a reliable instrument. So now we're going to use the SPSS example to generate the Chromebox Alpha for the instrument. First, go to Analyze, Select Scale, and Reliability Analysis. We will conduct the reliability test based on the factors or dimension of the instruments. Using the results we obtained from EFA, 
we label and give names to the item. Then insert the items of the same factors into the column here and click statistics. Select item, scale, and scale if item deleted. If you want to know more about the inter-item correlation, which is the correlations between the items, then you can tick correlations too. This is the output for reliability test. You will see the reliability statistics, item statistics, item total statistics, Cromba alpha value if item deleted, uh, which is important for us to improve the reliability of the instrument. We will interpret the values based on the rules of thumb provided by George and Mallory. Chromebox alpha above 0.9 is considered excellent. So for the attitude dimension, we have a value of 0.932, which is considered very good. We will keep all the items in this dimension because deletion of any items will result in a lower Cromba alpha values. But if you have Cromba alpha values below 0.7, uh, which is questionable or poor, unacceptable, then you can refer to the column here, Chromebox alpha if item deleted. So if you see that um, deletion of the items will result in higher Cromba alpha, then you can delete the items and we run the reliable analysis to obtain the Cromback alphas to see whether the value has been improved. The last part of this video will be focused on the reporting of the results. I got this checklist for EFA reporting from James Nail that published in 2008. Based on the checklist, the first thing to clarify is the theoretical underpinning, such as how the constructs are organized and measured in past studies, then followed by results. For result parts, you can include the assumption testing. Is EFA appropriate for your study? Type of factor analysis, PCA or PAF, or why you choose the type of factor analysis. Then talk about the number of factors and items you have decided to remove from your instrument um, based on the factor loadings. Next, report the rotation method. Autogonal or oblique rotation was used to produce the structure of your factors. After that, discuss the factor loadings, the cutoff point you have used, commonalities, and so on. Then, name the factor according to what you designed to measure. Lastly, report on the results of validity and reliability analysis. For the discussion part, you can use the criteria listed in the articles to guide your writing. An example was provided in the article too. So you can easily produce the writing and do not miss any important information when you are referring to the work. There is another guidelines created by Cabrera Gwen in 2010. The guidelines also outline the important criteria when you are reporting the results of EFA. I've provided the information of the articles in the description box of this video. So you can check on the information if you want to cite the articles for your reference. That's all about this video. I hope you have enjoyed the sessions. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you find the information is useful for your research.